Once the largest home in Chicago, the Palmer Mansion once graced the shores of Lake Michigan. Hi everyone, Ken here. Welcome to This House. Today we are exploring the history of what was quite possibly the most elegant home to be lost in Chicago. Make sure to hit that subscribe button so you never miss an episode of This House. Stick around until the end of the video to learn more about our new merch shop. At the time of the mansion's construction, Potter Palmer was already responsible for much of the development of the Gold Coast neighborhood. After the Great Chicago Fire of 1871, the buildings on State Street were destroyed and Palmer was yet again responsible for its redevelopment. Construction on the mansion began in 1882 and its exterior work was completed in 1883. However, interior decoration would continue for another two years before the building was entirely complete. Henry Ives Cobb and Charles Frost were chosen as the architects for the mansion. The interiors were completed under the direction of architect Joseph Lyman Silsby. John Newquist, who had already worked with Palmer on numerous other constructions, was chosen as the contractor and the stair constructor. Although it was originally budgeted at $90,000, after five years of construction, the mansion would cost the Palmers more than a million dollars or the modern day equivalent of over $29 million. The architects referred to its architectural style as early Romanesque or Norman Gothic. Alternatively, the mansion was supposedly based on a German castle. The mansion featured a three-story Italianate central hall under a glass dome. Other rooms were finished in a variety of historical styles what the owners called the Indian Room, an Ottoman Parlor, a Renaissance Library, a Spanish Music Room, an English Dining Room that could seat 50, and a Moorish Room, the rugs of which were saturated with perfumes. A collection of paintings, collected by Bertha Palmer, adorned the mansion's 75-foot-long Grand Ballroom. Gabriel Ferrier was commissioned to create murals in the frieze that ran above the Grand Ballroom, topping off the art collection with masterful adornment. The mansion's exterior included many turrets and minarets, and on the interior, a spiral staircase without a center support rising 80 feet into the central tower. Two elevators also served the building. The Palmers constructed their mansion's outside doors specifically without locks and knobs, so that the only way to get in was to be admitted from the inside by servants, never lifting a finger for anything, including simply opening a door. The Palmer Mansion was used for many social gatherings, including entertaining former U.S. President Ulysses S. Grant during his visit to the city and receptions during the 1893 World's Columbian Exposition, for which Bertha Palmer was a major planner and booster. When Potter Palmer died in the mansion in 1902, he left his wife with a fortune of $8 million or the modern-day equivalent of over $275 million. After his death, Bertha Palmer continued to reside in the house as well as in homes she maintained in London and Paris until she died at her winter residence in Osprey, Florida. She invested heavily in real estate in Florida, where she developed farms, dairies, and cattle ranches that she administered herself. With these great investments in land, she parlayed the fortune into almost double what she had been left and in 1918 bequeathed an estate of $15 million or the modern day equivalent of nearly $500 million to her sons. Her sons sold the Chicago mansion in July 1928 for $3 million or the modern day equivalent of nearly $50 million to the industrialist Vincent Hugo Bendix, who had invented an automobile starter. Potter Palmer Jr. and his wife vacated the property in April of 1930. Upon moving into the mansion, Bendix renamed the property, the Bendix Galleries, after adding paintings by Rembrandt and Howard Chandler Christie to Bertha Palmer's former art collection. While residing within the mansion, he modernized the elevator and installed a barber's chair for his own use. Vincent Bendix contemplated raising the mansion to construct a 50-story hotel on the site at an estimated cost of $25 million. However, the project was never put into action and the property was sold to Potter Palmer's son in 1933 for $2 million, which was the amount of the building's mortgage. The mansion stood vacant for years until it was demolished in 1950 to be replaced by a 22-story high-rise apartment building housing 740 families. The mansion's painting gallery, including works by French painters Claude Monet, Pierre-Auguste Renoir, and Edgar Degas that were collected by Bertha Palmer, was transferred to the Art Institute of Chicago and the furniture was sold. And so the short-lived legacy of the Palmer mansion had come to an end. But something else has just started. Our new merchandise shop is now live. Show your support for this house by donning some This House logo gear. From coffee cups to hoodies, there's sure to be something you'll like. All profits from the merch shop will go straight into video production so we can keep bringing you entertaining and educational videos centered on architecture. As always, I really hope that you enjoyed this video. Please make sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe. I'll see you next time on This House.